Okay, uh, let's get started. Today we're going to actually switch to talking about designing databases, which is um, a sort of major topic on its own. Uh, a few announcements. Okay, homework two is homework two is due yesterday. So I apologize for the various problems with homework two. Um, not to throw my TAs under the bus, but they wrote the questions, not me. <laughs> no, but I here, here's what happened. I should have um, I didn't check their questions at, like I should have because I was in kind of a time crunch at the time. So um, that won't happen again. Um, yeah. So. Homework three uh, was the first half of it was posted this morning. The second half we posted uh, tonight, and that's due in a week. Uh, then the first half is going to be more queries using the more advanced uh, topics, and uh, the second half is going to be some database design stuff that, like, based on what we're talking about today and next lecture. And then the exam uh, is one week from Thursday. So. Um, in addition to the homeworks, you have some practice exams online that you can work on uh, to prepare for that, including the answers. So obviously do the exam first, then check the answers. And there are also some practice homework uh, questions. You'll see that the homework numbers are like not homework one and two because I've done these, the, this class in different order in the past, like covered SQL queries toward the middle or the end or something. So don't worry about that. Whatever you see posted there is, um, you'll find questions similar to what we, you've done for the homework and so it'll be a chance for you to try some more of those. And you'll see in the practice exams, like the format of questions I tend to ask for SQL are like showing you a query and then asking you what they do instead of the other way around because that doesn't require you to like memorize how the syntax works, rather just to read some syntax and uh, the syntax will be correct and it'll do something reasonable and it'll answer some reasonable question and that tends to work out pretty well. So any questions about, yeah, logistics or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the exams are open notes, open books, if you have a book. So uh, print out the slides, uh, yeah, and, and have fun. <laughs> but yeah, so and you can bring like, you know, the past exams if, or pat, you know homework, stuff like that. That might be useful, um, yeah. Yeah, no, <laughs> no laptops. Right. So obviously, that sounds like an, uh, a stupid question, but uh, some students have come have like you know said like, oh, I have the PDF of the book on my laptop or the slides. I don't want to print them out. So yeah, I I understand it seems wasteful to print out a lot of paper just for an exam, but I don't like. There's no other way for me to enforce that you're not like talking to each other, right? So no electronic devices uh, during the exam. All right. So. Last time we did some uh, additional SQL stuff, like we combined multiple selects using union, intersect, and accept. And union sort of uh, added the results from two queries together. Uh, I, I describe this as a vertical combination instead of a horizontal combination. So horizontal, uh, like joins, kind of take, ta take ta columns from two different tables and kind of put them next to each other to make a wider table. That's a horizontal um, combination, but these, like union, uh, instead takes rows from different queries and stacks them on top of each other. So it's like a vertical combination of results. Uh, these are necessary when um, you need to look at two different virtual tables, um, but in a different way than joins. So joins also looked at multiple tables, but um, joins uh, again, we're combining things horizontally instead of vertically. We also looked at some more advanced use, use of predicates, for example, summing an indicator variable, and we looked at the case statement, which is like an if-then-else kind of uh, syntax, which is pretty useful. Okay. Any questions about last lecture? Okay. Okay, so we're moving on to a new topic, data modeling, uh, which is to say, how do you define a relational database schema which which structures the data so that you can fill in later. Okay, so a database schema defines the, the structure of the data. It's also called a data model. Uh, we you think you can think of it as metadata, meaning that it's data about the data. So it's not it's not the data itself. It's data about the data, and it involves defining tables essentially. 
that's that's really all all you're doing defining the tables and the details of those tables so like um, what columns are in each table columns have both a name and a type what are the um, primary keys foreign keys we'll talk about those in this lecture kind of define them and uh, unique keys also also we'll talk a little bit about data types I guess not in this lecture but uh, in an, a later one because some co a column should only store one type of data um, be it integer floating point text date time and so on I'm looking for my pointer sorry um, yeah, and sometimes columns are optional, sometimes they're required, that's a feature of the data schema, and uh, we can also have default values for columns in some cases. But um, yeah, so generally these tables that we're defining, in addition to having columns, they we, we need to think about what they represent, and generally they're either objects, events, or relationships, and through a series of examples we'll get a better idea of what that means and how to design your own databases, database schemas. Okay. So here is an example we're going to go through in this lecture to talk about the different uh, like features of, of database schemas. And this is it's called Chinook, but it's basically just an online music store database. So it has an information about customers and employees and purchases and music and, and the information about music is in multiple levels because you have like artists and albums and tracks and playlists and genres and stuff like that right so it's 11 tables kind of moderately complicated and we'll use this as an uh, we'll, 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 in this lecture we'll try to understand why this is structured the way it is right because choosing breaking this into 11 different tables is kind of like it's not trivial by any means and, and there are reasons why it's split up the way it is. Okay. So first, let's describe a few features of the current design. Uh, and, and we'll introduce a new terminology along the way. So primary keys are a very important uh, concept in, in, database, in relational databases. And these are the columns in, in each table that uniquely identify the rows. So basically, these are the values that can't repeat in the table. And I've hi highlighted with stars all the primary keys. And you'll see also that they're underlined. Um, and so in this class, when we draw these database diagrams, you'll always underline the primary key. And that'll give you important information about what can be stored. Because it tells you what can't be repeated. And uh, which So it kind of tells you what the most important, somehow, column is in the table. Like for a track, um, Track ID is underlined. That's the primary key. That means that you cannot have two rows with the same track ID. The thing that really is fundamental about tracks is their track ID. Like you can have two tracks with the same uh, name or the same album or genre. Like all these things, composer, the duration, those things can all be repeated by different tracks, but the track ID cannot. The thing that actually identifies like this is the same track as another track is the track ID, okay? And it's the primary key, and we call it the primary key. It's, uni it's unique, it can't be repeated, okay? Very often it's an integer identifier. So it's some number that was assigned to the data specifically for the purpose of like disambiguating the rows, of uniquely identifying the rows. Like employee ID, playlist ID, uh, customer ID, all those things were added uh, just to, to allow us to refer to rows in a very like efficient and unambiguous way, right? Um, there's one table I want to point out: primary or playlist track here. This has a composite primary key. You'll see there are two things underlined: playlist ID and track. That means that the combination of these two columns has to be unique. There's no one column that has to be unique, but rather a combination of columns that has to be unique. Uh, we'll see how that's used later on with uh, many-to-many -many relationships. Okay, so any questions about primary keys before we move on? Yeah. Yeah, why not use track ID directly on the playlist track? Because 
we, by definition, if I'm saying it's not the primary key, that means I want to allow multiple rows for the same track ID. Now, why? That depends on what you're using this for. In this case, um, a certain song, a track, can be on many people's different playlists. There are many different playlists, you know? Like, you know, top 10, um, you know, like wedding songs, whatever. The same song could be on all those different playlists. But we can't have, the re but you, what you can't have is the same song twice on the same playlist. It's either on the playlist or it isn't, you know? And similarly, you wouldn't have just the playlist ID as the primary key because you want to allow multiple songs to be on that playlist, not just one song. Okay. So similar to primary keys are unique keys. These are not very common, but it's like an additional primary key. So I'm bringing it up now because they're closely related to primary keys. You can think of them as secondary primary keys, or just secondary keys. This is an additional column or set of columns that cannot be repeated. So in some rare cases, you might have two things, essentially two choices for a primary key, and you don't know how to choose, so you make one of them the primary, and you make another one like a secondary, or a you know, unique key is the terminology that I want to use here. Okay, so an example I'm showing on the right, we have a table that's like albums, and there's album ID, and you might have uh, UPC, it means like the barcode number, so the, bar the UPC might also be unique. And by making it a, a unique column that is preventing rows from being added that duplicate this UPC or that duplicate the album ID separately. So both of those have to be unique in this particular table in order for the data to be added. Okay. Uh, and then the notation for that in, in our syntax is just to write unique or abbreviation UNIQ next to the column. It's kind of a uh, clunky notation, but that's because it's not too common. So we're not, we're not going to worry too much about that. Yeah. So both unique and primary keys allow you to create foreign keys, which we'll talk about next. Okay, connect. We'll talk about the connections ne next. And yes, those are related to uh, these these unique keys and primary keys. Okay. Okay, so foreign keys are, I think after primary keys, these are like the most important concept uh, in, in, in database design. Uh, these are links between tables. So when you have a foreign key, uh, basically it, it means that a column refers to another column. So at the, at the very top left, we represent these with arrows in the diagram. So arrows in these diagrams are, are, uh, go from a foreign key to the column they reference. And so a foreign key in this, like in this upper left of the picture, artist ID is a foreign key that points to the artist table, artist ID column. And what this means is whenever you create an album, right, the, whatever artist ID you put in that column has to match a row in that other table um, in the artist ID column. All right, so this allows you to create, so essentially it's a reference Foreign keys create references that, that are enforced when you're adding new data. So um, usually, uh, by default, you, 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 know, you can't add data unless the foreign key uh, matches something. And, and, you, and these point to primary or unique keys. So that's the connection to the previous question. Uh, in, in, all, in all these cases where we have foreign keys, or the foreign keys are marked with stars on the slide, just to highlight them, in all these cases, the things they point to are primary keys that are underlined. And the reason for that is because they're references. And you want a reference to be unambiguous to point to one row and not a set of rows. In order to force it that it uh, points to one row, you require that they refer to a primary or unique key. Yeah, question? It doesn't, no. For example, l let's just look in this upper left where we have albums and artists, right? Artists have many albums. So you might have uh, in here many different rows for the same artist that are just that have different titles, you know, different albums for that artist. 
you know, the album ID has to be different, but the artist can be repeated. I mean, every time it's repeated, it does have to refer to a valid artist ID from another table. But in the second table, where it's not a primary key, it's just a foreign key, it'll be, it can be repeated many times. Okay, so that, and that's important because it allows you to create a, a many-to-one relationship. So you can have many albums for every artist, but not the other way around because, um, yeah, because this is a primary key in here. Okay. Uh, yeah, so one other uh, quick point here, this playlist track table in the middle, it's actually made entirely of foreign keys and I sometimes call those linking tables. So the whole point of that playlist track table, it doesn't provide additional information. It's just listing IDs that are present in other tables. But th the information it is storing is a relationship between data and other tables. In other words, this, is, this playlist track table is saying that a certain track is on a certain playlist. Uh, so every row in here creates one of those associations. Um, which I would call a relationship. Yeah. All right. So another concept that we, now that we have foreign keys defined, we can uh, talk about parent and child tables, which is a, a pretty simple concept, just labeling um, tables that depend on other tables or that refer to data in other tables. So in this case, the stars, I have um, marking parent tables, and the child of those parents are marked, I'm uh, sorry, the, the brown stars of the parents and the green stars of the children. So uh, whenever you have a foreign key that defines a parent and child table because uh, data has to exist in one of the tables before data can be added in the other table because it's a reference, right? So in this case, in the upper left, uh, artist has to exist first before we can create an album. Otherwise, when creating the album, we would not be able to list an artist ID that matched some valid artist. Right. So the child points to the parent. And the parent row has to be created before the child row can be, crea can be uh, created. But these parent and child uh, relationships, you know, tables are not either parent or child, but pa tables have parent and child relationships. And so just like in real life, uh, something can be simultaneously a parent and a child. So this album table is a child to artist, but it's a parent to track, right? Because tracks can't be created until albums are created. And somehow artist is like a grandparent of track, right? If you want to use that terminology. Make sense? So you follow, you follow the arrows to go to the ancestors, like the parents. And every schema will have highest level parent tables, which are kind of like t tables that don't, ha don't point to anything else, but they have things pointing to them, most likely. Uh, and th these are the tables that can be filled in from the very start, right? If you don't, because the way that uh, these databases work is that generally, you know, you would define the schema first, so you'd, you'd define this, all these tables and the relationships, and then after that, you'd start loading the data in. You know, so, but you can't start creating tracks first because those depend on, all, all, on data having been in other tables. Whereas uh, if you trace out the arrows to the, to the kind of like finishing points, uh, the highest level parents uh, are, are these ones highlighted that you can start adding data in first. Make sense? Okay. All right. So foreign keys, remember, are the arrows. Arrows represent foreign keys, and um, they're actually defined in the table that starts the arrow, and the arrow just kind of tells you uh, what table it refers to. And because there's a relationship between the rows and two tables, there are policies that affect when rows can be deleted to uh, enforce like data consistency. So the, the default for, uh, so basically you can set up your, your foreign keys to have one of three different policies that affect how deletions can happen. 
this isn't this isn't super important, but I, I figured I'd mention it since we were introducing foreign keys. But the default is restrict, which is to say, um, if you if you have children that refer to a parent uh, row, then you can't delete that parent row. Like for example, if you have an artist that has albums, you can't delete the uh, artist. It'll, the database will stop you from doing deletions. So so far, we've only done queries like selects, but obviously, but there are also commands for adding new data, deleting data. Uh, th that's how databases can support you know transactions like new purchases coming in, new music being added, stuff like that. Um, another option is to cascade the delete. So like for example, if you delete an artist, you could if you set it to cascade. Uh, then it would delete all the albums that were pointing to it and all the tracks that were pointing to the albums and all the uh, playlist tracks that were pointing to the track. So that, that delete of the artist would, call it, would cascade to um, three. It would actually also cascade to the invoice lines that referred to tracks from that artist. And that would, that would allow it to, after the deletion, still be consistent. Um, but you, would, you will have you know, erased a lot, all the data that once referred to either directly or transitively to that entry. Right. And then finally, you can uh, set null, meaning that you break the uh, foreign key relationships. This is only possible if the uh, column is optional. Like, for example, if your album artist ID could be null, in other words, it's optional, then um, you could set it so that when you deleted the artist, the album would remain, but the artist ID would become null instead of having a number that was no longer valid. Okay, those are just three options. But yeah, this is this is not super important, but I just wanted to mention it. Okay. All right. So when we're defining a, a database schema, generally the first task is to like figure out what all the tables are that need to be represented. That's not trivial because it's sometimes hard to separate things out into tables. So we're going to spend a little time thinking about what roles the different tables play. And generally, uh, I like to think of them as being either objects, events, or relationships. And he, I've color-coded the, the ones in this example. A lot of objects, a few relationships, and one event. And th these are not like firm concepts. Uh, so, But I think it helps... Uh, to be able to talk about databases if you, if you have this terminology, even though some things can be labeled as maybe two different things in some cases. But anyway, so objects are the like people, places, and things. Um, relationships are tables that have at least two foreign keys that kind of as just associate other things in the database but don't really carry much data on their own. And events are things that can repeat with different times. So, yeah, playlist tracks kind of creates a relationship between playlist and track. Well, it certainly does. Invoice lines create a relationship between invoices and tracks. So it basically adds a track to an invoice. It also has additional information like the price and the quantity. So in that sense, it's not a pure relationship, which is why I say these aren't firm concepts. And an invoice is kind of an event because it's something that happened, meaning that it's something that has a date a purchase that has a date and some other information, but all that stuff can be repeated later on a different date, right? So that's why I call it an event. Um, yeah. All right, so let's try to apply those concepts to uh, this example. So this picture shows a university database similar to the one we have, we've been using in homework, but it's slightly different. It's from a textbook uh, by Silvershots. And let's try to find the relationships, composite primary keys, and then we're going to try to change the design to, to answer a certain question. But first, let's, uh, I have some new technology today that I'm trying to use here. I have an overhead camera. Um, so let's see if that works. Ooh. Boom. Yeah. Okay. 
So here's my copy that I'm we can annotate together. If I want that thing to go away. Yeah. Okay, cool. So first task is to find the relationships in this in this uh, schema. And relationships, remember, are things that have at least two foreign keys and that associate uh, existing tables or other tables. So what are the relationship tables here? Yeah. Advisor. Um, yes. So what is it? What does it uh, create a relationship between? Yep. And that kind of fits the English language definition of a relationship, right? Advising relationship. What else? Relationships. Yep. Okay, prereqs. Which is a relationship between what? Courses and other courses? Yeah, exactly. Courses and other courses. That's kind of cool. Yeah. 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 Y
visor. Nope, it's not. It's not underlined. So it has two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But basically, so you can see it's a pretty simple, you know, rule we can apply here to finding them, which is to just look for tables that have more than one thing underlined. So none of these on the right hand side, but all the ones on the left hand side. Uh, I have composite primary keys. Okay. So why let's look at this one of these in more detail just to understand try to understand what what's going on. Why do you think classroom here has more than one thing underlined? Like why is this table have a composite primary key? And also, yeah, like room 100 can be in multiple different buildings, and there can be multiple numbers in the same building. Exactly. Great. Um, okay, so that was those are composite primary keys. Um, yeah, so I, I want to try another exercise of this, which is to change this design to allow multiple majors per student. So you see in the current design, if I switch back here, every student, uh, where's the major listed? Department name, this is the major for the student. What if I want, to, but because it's here as a column, that means that every student, for the, for every student ID, like these row, these columns have to be filled in. So student has a name, student has a department name, student has a total credit. So there's only one department name that can be stored for that student because it's in the table for the stores the student's name, right, and student ID. So how do we change that to allow double majors or triple majors or quadruple majors, arbitrary n majors? <laughs> Yeah. Right, right. It's an idea. So if you basically if you wanted to allow the rows to repeat for the same student, you could change what the primary key was. Let me bring up a sheet to do that. So, for example, right now we have in the student table uh ID, name, department name. I'm going to ignore the last one because it's not important for this this uh, demo. But student one is, let's say, Steve. And uh, the department is CS, computer science. And you know, student two, say Jane, is uh, also computer science, whatever. All these, the primary key is ID, so if I make a new row, it has to have a different number here for the ID. Um, if I change that to be something different, then I could, for example, if I, if I made this and this a composite primary key, I could have Steve, I could have student ID one called Steve up here again and have, you know, like IE as a major here. But this also is kind of confusing and weird because you're listing the student twice. That you're listing the ID twice, and you could have like different names for the person, or and that would that would give like contradictory information. So in addition to allowing you to give differing department names, which was the goal, you also are allowing you to give 
differing information in all the other columns, which may not be desired, right? We you don't want a student to have multiple names in addition to multiple majors, right? So that's not going to work. Any other ideas? So I'll give you a hint that it involves adding a table. <laughs> yeah. Okay, student majors table. Let's try that. Okay, so let's let's build it out including both the column names and the table. So what what would you think what do you propose the columns be? Yeah. So, can you guys read this handwriting, or is it just like something that okay that I can <laughs> understand myself? <laughs> All right. So, I think this is a lot better than the whiteboard or the blackboard, which is why I I just got this thing. But anyway, um, yeah. So you could you could have a given student. So student one might have like computer science. And then how would you represent another major for that student? Um, if they're also majoring like English or something, there'd be another row. It would still have student ID 1, and then department name, and then department name, and then student ID 2, and then department name, and then student ID 3, and then department name, 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 and then what would you would you ch have to change this table as well? Um, no, as long as um, we just have to add the relation between, so like add the link from the student ID column to the student name to the student. Okay, so you need a foreign key, which is a link, which goes from where to where? Um, from the student majors to the student. Okay. Yeah, you're good at this. All right, so student majors. I'm gonna. So this was a, a view of like the deta like with actual data in here. I'm gonna translate that into just a view of the schema, which just has the column names, right? Not the not instances of the data. So I'm gonna stick that in here and say, okay, we have like a major ID and we have a department name and we also have a student ID. Uh, so those are the same three columns, and student ID has to match has to like has to match ID, uh, this ID in here. And to do that, it's, you make a foreign key and you draw an arrow to represent that. And you said the major ID was a primary key, so you underline that. Um, now that's getting sloppy. I, I I'm willing to admit that, uh, but yeah, you could also eliminate the major ID if you wanted to by just, uh, okay, so here's that other table. You could just, um, actually, let me start with it fresh. Well, you don't need the major ID uh, column. You can make a composite primary key with department name and student ID and eliminate the department, the uh, major ID. And so then the combination of department name and student ID would have to be unique but you couldn't, you wouldn't, so actually this design would allow you to say that, yeah, one shortcoming of this design pure, like purely as a, with one primary key would be that you could say that, um, that Steve has like two majors in computer science somehow because because you, you're, you have a different ID here for it, but you're repeating the same values for the important part of the data. So really the important thing that's being represented here is a combination of these two. 
So I would get rid of those. Yeah, question. Yeah, you, that's that's also important. If you should get rid of this because this formerly was storing one major for each student, and you don't need that anymore. And in fact, keeping it there would be confusing because it would list one major, whereas you have another table that stores multiple uh, multiple majors. Sorry. So, yeah, I have a table here with two columns: department name, student ID. But they're both underlined. And student ID points to the ID here in the student table. Okay. Great. All right. So that was that example. Now, we can use foreign keys to create relationships between tables. And those, and those relationships are, are really relationships between the rows and the tables. And uh, those are either one-to-one -one relationships, one-to-many, many-to-many. Um, and it's important to kind of understand what those mean. So let's talk about that in more detail. And what we saw before in that last example was kind of uh, changing a one-to-one -one relationship into a one-to-many relationship with the between majors and uh, students. Okay. So most foreign keys you'll see, I think, in most databases, create one-to-many relationships where, for example, like many albums can exist for one artist, many tracks can exist for one album. These exist when you have a column that's not a primary key that has a foreign key, uh, which is true of most of these arrows. So actually, all of the arrows in this table represent one-to-many relationships because none of these arrows start on columns that are underlined, that are primary keys, in other words. Yeah. So you can create many different rows. So a one-to-many -one relationship allows you to have, so although you have information in this playlist table, that is, you only have one name for that playlist here, you can have many rows in this playlist track table that have the same playlist ID to add many track IDs to that playlist, right? So having multiple tables allows you to have, like in, w in one table, the parent table, the information that's not repeated, that only exists one time for that row. And then in the, sec in the second table that refers to it, you can have as many rows as you want to add additional information, a t you know, a, a certain type of additional information to that data element. Right. Another uh, type of relationship you can create is a many-to-many -many relationship. And these are represented by uh, linking tables. These tables that have like multiple foreign keys pointing in different directions, or even in the same direction, but multiple foreign keys. Um, so the point of these linking tables here, playlist track and invoice line, is simply to create a many-to-many -many relationship between the things they point to. So playlists can have many tracks, tracks can have many playlists, and this table in the middle is what allows those to be defined. Um, yeah. And I think we'll see, in, I mean, you've already seen that in, all, you've seen all of these things in the diagrams we've been using all along. But as we design more uh, databases from scratch, yeah, I think you'll see um, how, how, like why, how their structure influences the relationships in the data. Another type of relationship, the final of those three, is a one-to-one -one relationship. And I actually went ahead and added some new tables to this design in order to introduce some one-to-one -one relationships that weren't already there. Um, and these occur when you have a foreign key that's also a primary key or a unique key. And that the fact that it's a primary or unique key means that it can't repeat. So um, basically, this, al this allows you to create uh, addition to store additional information that's optional for the thing that you're pointing to. Um, so for example, here, 
I have for albums, I created a table pointing to it called Grammy Award, which has the album ID and the year. And because, uh, so album ID is a foreign key that points to the album table, right? In years, like the year when the award was won. But because album ID is underlined here, it's primary key in this Grammy Award table, you can't have more than one Grammy Award for a given album, right? When you do have a Grammy Award, you have the year here, which is additional information uh, that's useful. But it's also, it, it's, it, it's information that actually could have been stored in the album table because it's one-to-one, -one, right? You could have put like Grammy Award year in here uh, under album, but that would require that you store it for every album, and some albums don't have Grammy Awards at all. So instead, we create this subset table. It's called a subset table because only a subset of the rows in the parent table are present, and every row in here has to be has to refer to something in the parent table because of the relationship, the fact that there's a foreign key, and they're not repeated because uh, the foreign key is also a primary key. Okay, so it's a sub it creates a subset of the parent. So in this case, a subset of albums that, ha that have won Grammys, and it provides additional information about that subset. In this case, the year when the award was given. All right, and also the fact that there is even a row at all is an additional piece of information. Like in other words, membership in the subset is encoded in the fact that there's that could there would be a row present in this Grammy Award table uh, on the right. Okay, so that's kind of a subtle uh, concept, uh, and it's it's an alternative to having optional columns in the parent table. So you could have had like a Grammy Award column here that was optional, the Grammy Award year column in the album table was optional, and that would kind of accomplish the same thing. That makes sense? The other example here I have is returns. So you could have some additional return information about some of the invoices, some of the orders, in other words. And not every order would have return information, but some of them would, and the return information would include like the time when the return happened, the amount that was refunded. Um, so that's, that's optional information for invoices that some rows have, but other rows don't, right? So it's a subset table that provides that information. Okay. Um, in general, optional columns are never needed, but it's, it's, it's something that we have available to us. Here's an example of redrawing that last uh, example with the Grammy winning year being an optional column in the album table. So this this is actually a good al a better alternative probably than uh, than than like having this whole big whole subset table dedicated to it. Like this is kind of messy compared to uh, just sorry compared to just this one extra column. However, the other example I gave on that past slide was a good example of when you would want a subset table. Uh, so I'll get that in the next slide. Get to that in the next slide, but. So here, optional columns are common. Um, if you, you can, basically what it means for it to be optional is that the value could be null. Uh, and when you're defining the schema, you basically t can say whether you want to allow columns to be null or whether they have to have va values, right? So in our, in our diagrams, we have OPT next to optional columns. Otherwise, we assume that they're required. Okay? So you have this, like I said, you have this option, uh, the, you can use subset tables and optional columns in similar ways to provide additional optional information about uh, rows. For the Grammy Award, there was only one thing we were providing additionally, so we didn't really, it, it was very easy to add as optional column. But for this return thing, actually having, putting this information in the original invoice table would be error prone because you could, you could, for example, have a return time and re return refund amount column that's optional in here, but simply doing that would allow one to be filled in and not the other. Like, there's nothing that, that there's no way for you to say that they are either both together optional or both required, except by having it in a separate table where all the elements in that table are required. So, either, so then you kind of create this, uh, uh, like, uh, combined optionality or, like, an optional bundle of, of columns by saying that 
Yes, invoices don't have to have a corresponding row in the return table, but when they do, every column in that table is required. Okay. All right, so to summarize, so I'm, we're not done with lecture, but I'm going to summarize slides and we'll, we'll switch over to doing some more uh, pen and paper uh, exercises. Uh, data models, uh, data modeling involves defining tables and also defining some characteristics of the columns of those tables. So uh, primary and unique keys prevent rows from repeating certain columns. And they kind of define what is uh, the purpose of that table in some sense. That's what the primary key does because th that's the thing that, that can't be repeated. Uh, foreign keys link tables. These always point to primary or unique keys so that you know exactly what you're, you're so you reference exactly one row and not reference a set of rows. And um, they, they just create parent and child table relationships where you have to fill in the parent before filling in the child. We can label tables as being either objects, events, or relationships. Objects are most common. Relationships are probably second most common. And the different relationships between tables, are, they're not always represented. Uh, re relationship tables are for many-to-many -many relationships. So there's a separate table to represent a many-to-many -many relationship. But a one-to-many relationship is implemented with a single foreign key between tables. And a one-to-one -one relationship is represented by a subset table, that, which, is which means that it you know, has a foreign key that's also a unique key. Um, yeah. Okay, so any questions on the kind of theory or terminology definitions before we move on? All right, so, I mean, these are important. I will, I will ask about these things, uh, you know, in, in homework and exams. So um, this is a little bit of, like, yeah, terminology that you have to learn, but I think it's important. Okay, so I have a, I don't know, four-step <laughs> database design process. It's not really as formal as the seven-step uh, select uh, uh, method that I gave you before. But anyway, when you're, if you're designing a new database, generally the first step should be figuring out what all the tables should be. In other words, what are the different objects, events, and relationships? Write those down, and then you can kind of fill out the columns for those. And then you choose the primary key for each table. That'll help to reinforce what the meaning of each table is. And then you can choose foreign keys to link the tables. And then finally, you get to the details like unique keys and optional columns. And then kind of like finally look at everything and, and just iterate on the design to revise the decisions that you made earlier. Um, yeah. So with that in mind, I want to do some examples. I think I'm going to, is that too bright? No. Okay. Do some examples on paper. So basically, I want to go through designing a few databases here with you all. And we have our choice of what topic we want to cover, or topics. So is there anything in particular that you think would make a good database topic? <laughs> Any ideas for things to model with databases? We've seen recipes, school scheduling, purchase orders. Let me give you, let, let me give the first idea, which is uh, Safe Ride in Northwestern, right? The sort of free Uber service that you all have for <laughs> getting around town. Uh, how would you model a safe ride database using, you know, tables and columns and all the, the things we have available, right? So first question always is, uh, you know, what are the different tables that you would have for um, safe ride? Okay. Tables. Yeah. Okay, drivers, what else? Someone else? Yeah, cars, what else? Customers? What else? Those are the easy ones. 
Those are objects, right? Yeah, cars or vehicles. What else? Shout it out. Time. Was it? Times like uh, what? What things happen? At, like. Okay. Uh. Okay. When. Ride. Requested. I think we have to refine that a little bit. But that's we definitely need something for that. What else? Yep. Locations. Okay. Maybe we should try to get started with those those few and see how they fit together. I think that we're going to find that these first three are clearly objects that should have their own tables. These other, these final two are, um, it's not clear to me up front how they should be represented, but once we have the first few, once we have some basic structure, then I think it'll become more clear. So we can uh, start with like, Okay, let's define a driver table, right? So it has a t the table has a name, and then the table has a bunch of columns. Every row represents a driver, and every driver has some characteristics, right? So what are those things that drivers have? Like, what are the qualities of a driver that should be represented by columns? License number, like driver's license, okay. What else? Name, yeah, let's just get basic. Anything else? Say again? Gender? Okay, sure. So, so what? So year in school? Okay, yeah, like, uh, okay, year. Okay, well, we could go on for a while, but let's say that's, that's good enough. Um, okay. What is the primary key for that table? Yeah, so license or ID number. Um, I guess there are two different IDs that could be applicable here. There's like the net ID, if this is a Northwestern system, and there's like also driver's license ID. But let's just say we already have license ID listed, so we'll use that. Okay. And the other tables are like cars. What do, what do cars have? They have license <laughs> numbers too. I think there's an S in here somewhere. <laughs> right? Uh, what else? Okay. Let's say make and model, or like maybe combined make and model. Capacity? Yeah, interesting. Capacity, some cars have more space than others. Anything else? Mileage, Mileage? okay, yeah. Has anyone actually uh, driven for safe ride, like as an employee? No one? I, I had a class where like there were three or four people who had been safe ride drivers, I don't know. I guess okay, um, customers. So this is probably going to look similar to drivers since they're both students in both cases, right? Except what's different. So like, let's say that there is a name um, and maybe a year. Okay, gender, sure, but not too important. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, student ID. I guess I could have said net ID. So instead of the license ID, because the students don't necessarily have driver's licenses, so, but they would have student IDs. Maybe that should be the primary key, right? I forgot to say, for cars, what's the primary key? Yeah, license number is definitely not going to repeat. Um, okay, so this gives us a basic structure. Anything else we want to add to these tables that's essential? Okay, so sure, we have more tables we need to create, but of these ones, anything we want to add? Okay, I think that's probably good for now. Um, 
So for now that we have drivers, cars, and, and customers, are these linked in any way? Like, are there any foreign keys that connect these tables? I know we're gonna add we're gonna add more tables later. Let's just sit, keep take that for granted. But be before we do that, given that we just have drivers, cars, and customers, is there any linking between these? Should there be any linking directly using these tables? Yeah, probably not. I mean, eventually, like to have a database that was just three tables like this that had no connections between them wouldn't make sense, actually. Probably, right? Because there's, if there's no relationship between the three different entities, then they could be separate databases anyway. I mean, except, yeah, I mean, in, in rare cases, maybe you would have it. But but what what are the things that do tie these things, these three entities together? Yes? Yeah, orders. I, I don't know if that's the right term, but yeah, we, you could. Okay, orders. Right. So, what is an order? So, should we make a table for orders? Let's try anyway. Um, orders. So, what is an order? Like, what are the elements of an order? What do you have in mind? Yeah. Okay. Um, that's a customer, right? Yeah. Anything else? Maybe not. So, yeah, let's say time, time and date. Let's let's say that that somehow we're gonna have one column that incorporates all of the time information and the date information. Just like we have location, somehow we, we've listed location, but it's not clear what location is yet. Um, customer though, that, that refers to this customer table, right? So we can actually draw an arrow from customer up to here, and where would it point? Student ID? Okay. Seems good to me. Okay. How do we represent the fact that an order was actually like fulfilled? Like there, there's actually someone like a car came and picked up the the student and dropped them off. Yeah, in the middle. Order status row, like uh, in here. And this would be this would take different values like fulfilled, not fulfilled. Um, but then, how would you store the details about that fulfillment? Yeah, what would that table represent? What would be a good name for that table? Yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and suggest that it should be called rides. Someone, I think someone said earlier we should have a table for rides. Right, this is different. You can make a distinction between the orders and the actual rides. Um, an, an, an order is an order for a ride, but a ride is an order that was fulfilled, right? I mean, there, I, I, I assume there are some safe ride orders that never get fulfilled. I don't know. So, what quality, uh, what, what characteristics do rides have then? Yeah. Yes, exactly. How would you make rides a subset of orders? Um, remember, let's go to subset tables. That was something we kind of glanced through or uh, breezed through. Here are some subset tables. Here's a definition of subset tables. Um, I guess it's hard to show both at the same time. But we had an arrow pointing from a primary key to another primary key to make a subset table. So actually, it'd be hard to do that until we have a primary key in the orders table, 
right? So we kind of skipped that step. What should be the primary key in the orders table? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, we could try that. Order ID and underline that. Let's just. Now, if we want to make rides, we want to provide information in rides table that's a subset of, that provides supplemental information for a subset of orders. Um, how can we do that? So make it a subset, but how, like how do we, what, what are the columns and, and keys that we introduce to do that? Uh, order ID, yes. And like I said, bef the, I read off the previous slide that a subset table has a foreign key that points from a primary key to a, pr to a primary key. That primary key in this case is order ID, right? So you're gonna have order ID point to order ID, but two different tables, right? So whenever, so in other words, this order table will have rows that have order information. This rides table will also have rows that have order information, but it'll have different information about that order. And this will be optional. There will not always be a row here for every row here. And there can only be one row here for every row here because um, it's a primary key. So this order ID can't be repeated. All right, so uh, what kind of information would we want for rides? Yep. Time, yep. What else? Okay, uh, passengers, because you wouldn't necessarily know that when the order was placed. Is that right? Because what I'm saying is that there's a question of whether that should go here or here, right? If it's if passenger if the number of passengers is true for every order, it should go here, even if it's not fulfilled, or if it's something that only becomes known at the fulfillment time. Yeah. Okay. But it could also be something like the driver looks and like sees like, okay, you asked for three, but there are actually five people, you know. So it could potentially be in both, even. Yeah. yeah Uh, yeah, so maybe like a driver rating or something, or rating of passengers. So yeah, let's just say rating. Yeah. Driver as well. Yeah. Okay, driver. That's a little sloppy. So once an order is fulfilled, it has a driver for sure. So and it you can point up here to which column? License number. Great. Along that vein, every ride has a driver. It also has what? a car. Yep. And that will point somewhere to what column in the cars table? License. Okay. Are we missing anything there? Anything essential? Seems pretty good. All right, yeah, not bad for a first, uh, first example. You can also potentially complicate this by adding like information about the scheduling of drivers, like who works when, stuff like that, who works in what cars, I don't know. But um, maybe we, we could leave that off for now. Any other ideas for things to model? How about a movie theater? Uh, 
A movie theater chain. All right, so what are the tables? Okay, okay. Locations slash branches. What else? <laughs> Come on, anyone else? Employees, okay. Movies, yeah. Uh, yeah. Opening times, okay. Is that an entity or a quality of? Oh, it's interesting. Yeah, it'll let. It's not clear how the best way to represent that is. That's a good good example. Yep. Food. Okay. Okay. Maybe we can try starting with this stuff. See where it get, takes us. Um. Okay. So let's say a location. Or uh, when I say location, I mean a branch. What information does that have? That's unique to the location. Yeah. So it's like location. Uh. The the branch has a like physical location like city, uh, let's say address too. Let's say that's enough for the loca for the like address like location. What else does it have? Yeah. Capacity um, maybe. What would the capacity? What does that mean? Number number of like screens. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, so let's just say ID. Location ID or branch ID. And that's going to be the primary key, right? Okay. And what table? Let's do the movies table next. Well, okay. Let's do. Let's do them in, in the order we got them. Employees. Um, this is similar to what we had before um, for other like people tables. You have a name. What else might you have? Uh, maybe an employee ID. Like might be the social security number or something else. Okay, location ID where they work. Interesting. Yep. Location ID. Maybe that's enough. What's the primary key here? The ID, like the s social security number or whatever. And uh, what else do we need? Any foreign keys? Yes. Where? It's location ID, right? This can't just be any value. It has to match a value from up here. So we draw an arrow like that, right? Okay. Um, let's see how much time we have. We've got four more minutes. Okay. So movies. What what, what does that represent? Like, what what do you mean by movies? Like the title of the movie, the things that are playing. Is that right? Let's just say title, uh, release year, director. Um, and how, I think what, what's missing here, just in the short time we have left, let's try to come up with a way to represent what's playing in the theaters. So we have movies and we have locations, but we don't have any way to represent what's playing in the, in the movie theaters, right? Because you can't say that a movie can't have a location because a, we can't just say location here because that would only allow one location to play a movie. We can't say movie here in location because that would only allow one movie to play in a location, right? 
So what, we can't. We want this to be a many-to-many -many relationship, not a one-to-many. So both of those proposals were ways of different ways of one, creating one-to-many relationships. So how do we solve that? A relationship table, yeah. How would that work? Okay. Which has what? Okay, yeah, time. So movie obviously refers to something here. Let's say title might not be a good primary key, right? Because titles could repeat. Yeah, it needs some kind of ID. And the location would be location ID, right? Sorry, this should should have been out here. A screen number? Yeah. Uh that, that and that you're saying that's a quality of the schedule element. So at a given time and a given location, a given movie is playing on a certain screen. Yeah. That's that's great. But one final question, what should the primary key be here in the schedule table? How do we set this up so that we allow the showings to repeat in the proper way, but don't allow um, things to repeat improperly? Uh, yeah, what's your idea? Yeah. So this is one where um, I'm going to talk about it next time because we actually need multiple uh, we won't need multiple constraints to really make it work because uh, each screen can only be used once, I guess. Okay. But you said you said location, time, and screen number. We'll, c we'll come back to that next time. All right, thanks.